you've done and, and who you are, and we appreciate you, thank you God. because you're just so merciful. Amen. God, thank you for giving us another chance thank you, God. and seeing us another day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I still, we're still in Exodus chapter 14. We haven't moved. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. We've done three weeks now. I believe this is the fourth one. We will not be moving. No moving, no moving. Exodus chapter 13, I mean chapter 14, verse 13. And I want to concentrate on just the same section, but I keep picking out different sections to highlight. So for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and read chapter 14, verse 13, and I'll stop when I want to focus on it. It reads as follows, and Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand firm. Here's what I want to focus on tonight. And see the salvation of the Lord. That's what I'm going to stop right there. Amen. Amen. Fear not. Stand firm. But And see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Here's what I want to talk about you tonight. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. I want to talk about the habits of of a loser. We want to welcome you online, amen. Feel free to ask questions or do whatever you got to do. They're the habits of a loser. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. There is nothing. Did you hear me? There is nothing more depressing than underachieving. I thought I would have had a few more amens right there. I, 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 I just thought that, that, I mean, have you ever been there? Yeah. I mean, really, really just you went all this potential I have and, and I'm not doing nothing with it. Yeah. Now maybe, maybe after so everybody, everybody here, all y'all just fine. Let me see if we can do it this way. Um, you ever met one of your friends that graduated Amen. with you and you see them and they graduated again and you didn't? Come on, somebody help me out. Amen. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all graduated high school. You haven't seen them in four years. Yeah. And you haven't seen them in five years. They got their masters and you still yeah. with Pookie. Amen. You understand what I'm saying. Amen. And you, you knew you was underachieving, but when you see them, it was thrown inside your face the problem that you actually have. It's not that you're mad at their success. That's not. You're not a hater. That's not who you are. You appreciate that the Lord has blessed them. But what bothers you is when you saw them, you saw you. Come on, I'm trying to help you. I, I'm going to talk about the habits of a loser. Amen. Can I go ahead and break down to you what we really go through in life? Some of the folk that actually hate you, they don't really hate you. They hate that when they see your success, you remind them of their failure. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody out today. Amen. Let me see if I can do a little illustration here. The more you shine is the more I see me in your reflection. Amen. Does that make sense? The more degrees you have, the more I realize I don't. Come on, somebody help me out. Amen. The more you get a car every two years, the more I realize I'm still driving this 1994 Honda City with the window that don't roll down on the right hand side. And then when I order at McDonald's, I got to open my whole door open. And then stretch out this way. And the heater, the AC don't work. And the heater barely work in the wintertime. Amen. You understand what I'm saying. And so I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Because these, these, these people, they're going out of Egypt, right? They're going out of Egypt. And we've already discussed last week that they're slaves. And they would rather run back to being slavery. But now they can't even see salvation. Come on. I just want to talk about that. People with loser habits can't see winning. And so when you have winning conversations with them, they can't even understand you. Come on, man. And when you talk about doing winner things, they can't even comprehend those things. Come on, man. When you tell them you're going back to college, they can't even comprehend school. Sir. They say school isn't for everybody. Come on, sir. Every time you have a dream, they talk you out of it. And they reason, the reason they talk you out of what you can be doing is because they tried it and failed and they literally talk you out of your blessing because they don't want you to have it. Come on, I'm trying to help you. Remember, let's go back to that illustration. The more you shine is the more I see what's wrong with me and you. 
And if you're not careful, if you have the habits of a loser, you would literally have a problem with your spouse. Come on, somebody help me out in this place. Amen. If you have the habits of a loser, every time your spouse sit down and open up their Bible, you will have a problem. Every time your spouse sit down and open up their school books, you'll have a problem. Because you're so afraid that they are going to get smart and leave you right where you are. Come on now, amen. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody help me out in this place. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you so convinced that, that they're going to meet one of their classmates, one of their college buddies or college sisters or whatever it is, and they're going to run off together. And you would rather tear them down. So you can deal with them in your depression. Come on, I'm trying to help y'all out today. Amen. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. These guys, I've been Exodus 14. We we gonna, I told y'all this week was gonna be worse, right? Here's what we do. They go into freedom, but the Moses has to remind them, look at salvation. Listen, when you need to be reminded to look at what's good around you, you are in a bad place. Somebody help me out of this place. Amen. Listen, what if you woke up this morning? Sir. With just the stuff you thank the Lord for yesterday. What if you woke up this morning with just the stuff you thank the Lord for yesterday? Some of y'all wouldn't even wake up with your kids. Some of you so ungrateful, you didn't even thank the Lord for your children. You so ungrateful, you didn't even thank the Lord for your own life. Some of y'all, uh, uh, as a conundrum here, would have woke up dead. We so ungrateful. We complain about no gas, forgetting the fact we got a car. We complain about bad credit, forgetting the fact we live in America. Come on, somebody help me out. The, you could be poor in America and live 75% better than everybody else in the world. You'll graduate and be mad at you, mad because you're not working in your degree field. Because you have the habits of a loser. See, here are habits of a loser. Listen, these guys are going to uh, the promised land, but they're complaining about their process. See, you'll never get to the promise if you complain in the process. Because when you complain in the process, you literally keep yourself frozen in the process. When you complain about the process, you keep yourself frozen in the problem. And if you're always frozen in the problem, then you always have a problem. And if you always have a problem, then you always have pain. And if you always have pain, then you always have disease. And if you always have disease, then you're never happy. And what's the point of living if you can't be happy? Did you see what I just did there? See, you'll fool around and focus on the problem for a moment. But then you'll drag that one moment across your whole day. You'll get into an argument at 7.35 a.m. And I'll meet you at 9.36 p.m. And I'll ask you what's wrong with you. I've been having a bad day. <laughs> what happened this morning? What you mean this morning? Almost tomorrow. All day long. What you say is almost tomorrow. And you still wear And listen, the problem lasted for 13 seconds. But you drug it almost 24 hours. Now here's the crazy part. Some of y'all got the same 13 second problem that you drug across your whole 20s. And you, you get ready to finish your 30s and it's the same problem that you had for 13 seconds when you was 19. He, he cheated on me. Now everybody you meet going to do the same thing. Amen. Come on, somebody help me. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Amen. They're going to the promised land, but they're complaining about the process. Amen. And Moses has to say, listen, see your salvation. See, the reason why most of you can't fly because you keep looking at the ground. Amen. Come on, man. Even if you somehow flew, you can't even steer. Because you're looking at the ground. Did you hear what I just said? You can't even, you can't, okay, so let me, let me, let's go science just for a second. Let's go science. It would seem like the, 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 the law of lift or, 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 or the law of aerodynamics or, or flying defies gravity. It seems that way. It seems like if you fly, you're literally defying, defying gravity. But here's how it actually works. There's something about gravity that operates on lift and 
You can't steer the plane if gravity's not pulling you to the ground. See, if it was no gravity, you just float. Most of y'all just floating through life. I promise you I was going somewhere that whole time. I promise you that was going somewhere that whole time. Y'all just floating through life, can't even steer. The problems keep you steering in the right direction. The mere fact that you know what you don't like makes you go the right place of what you do like. Did you hear what I just said? The thing that keeps pulling you back to the ground is the very same thing pulling you to the right direction. Talk, man. But most of y'all, you get motivated by what pushes you. Push ain't strong enough. Push is not strong. If it ain't pulling you, see, you're motivated by what just pushes you. See, 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 losers, they get pushed all the time. They push themselves to their goals and they even get pushed around. You ever been driving down the highway and the wind just pushed the car and you had to catch the wheel? See, 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 but if you're not being pulled in the right direction, then you can't wake up at 3 in the morning when you know that you need to be up at 3 in the morning. When you're not getting pulled in the right direction, you won't skip that extra sweet potato pie that's going to come up on December 25th. Amen. 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 If, you, if you're not being pulled in the right direction, you won't give up when push knocks you down. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. They go into the promised land, but they're complaining about the process. And when they complain about the process, they get more pain because their eyes in the wrong direction. Losers are always looking in the wrong spot. Here's how losers look like in real life. They dead wrong, caught up in the middle of the situation. They go out their way to be the victim. Come on, man. I think they cut my mic off. Listen, listen. The losers have a habit of being the victim. Did you not see it in the text? They go into the promise of Moses. Man, put us back there. Go ahead and go put us back in such. Losers are always the victim. And nothing is ever their fault. And it's never what they did. It's always you. Come on now. Somebody help me out in this place. Losers will never take responsibility for their own actions. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Somebody help me out. Amen. I'm simply saying that when you dead wrong, be dead wrong. Because you'll never change it if it's never your fault. Come on, man. If, if, if you'll never stop underachieving until you stop lying to yourself and admit that you're underachieving. See, most of us are gravely underachieving, but we keep lying to ourselves. We put on perfume, put on the finest of clothes, but we got a broke bank account. If your bank account broke, it's time to stop looking like a million dollars. But you know where we got that from? Our parents. Amen. 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 Let me let me talk about black folks right now. Amen. Let me talk about black folks right now. You know us, brothers and sisters. Amen. You bet don't that's it. You better not let them see you doing bad. I know black folk that would literally get in the stove and, and brown some onions. And they literally had a whole house smelling like it's something good going on in here. And all that's in the house is onions on a skillet. But you smell it all the way to the dry. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Listen, we got to stop doing that. I'm not saying let people see you weak. But I sure can't give you a handout if you looking like you got it all together. And that's your problem. Some of y'all too humble to accept gifts. Wow. That's not even humble. Wow. See, I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Wow. See, see, the Lord has given them a gift and they say, nah, I don't want that. Take me back. Wow. Some of y'all cannot get your breakthrough because you're too humble, air quotes, to accept what somebody has given you. You prayed, Lord, help me out, and God sent you somebody. But since he didn't have holes in his hands, and since he didn't die on the cross, you don't want help from that person. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all need money real bad, and the Lord sends you somebody willing to help you out. But since it's not packaged in the manner in which you want it to be packaged, you refuse to get help. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Amen. You're not going to have you a good, good 2017 if you're not willing to let people help you. 
Can I tell you why people need to help you? Help me. Because your cup needs to stay empty. Because nobody likes to fill a full cup. If I got something, listen, if I walk by a cup and I see it full all the time, I'm going to never pay that cup attention. I only want to deal with the empty cups. Come on, man. Come on, somebody help me out. If you know everything, people who can help you are passing you up. Nobody want to deal with no full cup. Can't even tell people. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, they're going to the promised land, but you know them. Moses had to say, keep your eyes on salvation. Losers will always look at your problem. Never diagnose their own. Yeah. Y'all know somebody like that? Yeah. Can tell you about how, how, how you got divorced. Yeah. Come on now, amen. Yeah. Amen. Can tell you about why he left. Amen. But can't tell you why they single. <laughs> Come on, amen. I'm just, do, am I the only one to know these people? Sometimes I look at my Facebook timeline and I just feel heartbroken. I be like, oh my yeah. God, what are you going through today? Yeah. Amen. Some of, some of y'all. Listen, some of y'all are taking marital advice from single folk. Amen. That don't make no sense at all. No. You're not going to get you a, a child counselor with no children. Amen. Don't make no sense for you to be listening to poor people, but, but that's what losers do. You understand? And I know losers sound so bad, but here it is. There's only winning or losing. There's no in-between. The Bible says this way, you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. Come on now. You're going to be lukewarm. Come on. You're going to bear fruit or you not. Come on now. But if you, you, you understand, right? It, it's, it, the Bible seems to suggest that the Lord, who has no respect of person, literally respects no fruit better than maybe I'll have some fruit today fruit. Yeah, I missed what I just said. Okay. He tells you this side of the fence or that side of the fence, but he specifically says, don't straddle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, if, if you pick, unless you pluck it out your Bible, I promise you, it says hot, cold, but don't be lukewarm. Okay, let me see if I say it this way. A friend to everybody is a friend to none. I'm trying to help you out. Let me see, 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 losers, let me tell you what losers do. Losers don't know how to pick sides. So what they do is they're friends with you and your enemies. Come on, somebody help me out. Amen. They're friends with you and your enemies and they frequently let your enemies talk about you and never stand up for you. Come on, I wish I had somebody right around there. And even God is saying, that ain't how we supposed to behave. You ain't doing nobody no good not picking the side of the fence. But that's what losers do. See, see, you won't be in slavery or you're going to be in a promised land, but let us go ahead and just complain. When people who have not chosen loser or winner complain. If you want to find people who have not chosen that they want to be successful or unsuccessful, they complain. Because here's the deal. If you are unsuccessful and you've chosen that, and that's what you want, you will not complain. Come on, okay, let, let, okay let's, 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 I'm going to break this down for you. How many of us um, don't really fit inside the body weight scale that they got, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you. I got my hand up first. You understand? But let me tell y'all something. I show like the way I look, and you ain't gonna never hear me complain about my weight. I've accepted the fact that I am a solid, thick black man, and I'm okay with that. You will not hear me complain about. Give me that pop, girl. I want all my calories right now. Amen. Does that make sense? Because I've accepted, I'm just going to lose that battle. I'm not going back to 154 pounds, and I ain't even trying. Does that make sense? So if you talk to me, you're not going to hear me bash myself about my weight because I'm comfortable right where I'm at. Amen. To the medical field, I may be losing, but not to me. I don't complain about this battle because I like this battle because this is what I chose. Make sense? Come on now. Okay, so if you if people are losing, they don't complain. If they want to be a slave, that's exactly where they want to be. Right. Amen. If they want to be in abusive relationships, they're not going to complain about their husband, their girlfriend. That's where they want to be. The only people that are complaining are the people who have not decided that that's what they want to do. Amen. The only people complaining all the time are the people straddling the fence. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. 
The all, listen, listen, it's a whole month after the election and some of y'all still complaining about it. <laughs> there, these are folk who just decided that I ain't going to decide nothing. Whatever they decide is what I'm going to let happen to me and I'm going to complain about it until it show up. Amen. I promise y'all I'm telling the truth. Those who complain have not made a decision to win or lose. On, See, they complaining about slavery because they've never made a decision to accept the Lord's freedom. Yep. Yep. The, text. Yeah, the text. Moses says, see the Lord's salvation. Amen. Some of y'all can't see the Lord's salvation because you ain't never looked at your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Okay. Amen. Let me see if I got, I guess I got to open this one up. God has everything laid out. But since you won't see it in yourself, you can't even see it in him. Wow. You believe in the Lord, but you don't believe that you can have his riches. Come on now. You believe in the Lord, but you don't believe you deserve his riches. Come on now. Does that make sense? You believe that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that he can act, that you can act or think, except for you. Come on now, by my show of hands, how many of you believe that God is real? He just got a problem with you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. He say, Amen. I've been there. Amen. Listen, I used to seriously. I, I, you know what I'm talking about? I believe God is real. He just won't want. He just want me to struggle. <laughs> Amen. We say that. He, he real. He just want me to struggle. My life, child, my life just meant to be struggling. Amen. No. I'm not. Now, we're going to all struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that don't mean your life is meant to struggle. Come on now. Amen. 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 If your name is not Hosea, Amen, yeah. or Jesus. Or or a uh, uh, fire shut up in my uh, bone. What's his name? A uh, Jeremiah. Okay. Just assume the fact that the Lord didn't want you to struggle. Amen. Okay. Let me see. Let me break that down. Hosea was told, "Go ahead, and marry a prostitute. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do that. And um, um, she gonna cheat on you the whole time, player, and deal with that." Jeremiah was told to preach forty years, and you ain't gonna never save nobody. And we know Jesus went to the cross. Yeah, come on now. Now, if your name ain't none of them, just assume the fact that God ain't writing his Bible no more, and he ain't trying to make no example out of you. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. Does that make sense? His canon is closed. Maybe you have the right for a breakthrough like everybody else. Come on now. But here we are. Here we are. This is us. We got the habits of a loser. Listen, you got all the brains in the world. You have all the talent. You have everything. You have everything. Everything inside you to succeed. You have it already. Whatever you stop looking. In fact, let me open it up. Stop looking outside for help. It's already inside. Come on, man. Yeah. Right. Everything you need to get to the next level. Everything you need to have a wonderful 2017. It's in you. Amen. It's already there. God has already put it in you. Period. Amen. It's right there for you. You just gotta believe you deserve to use it. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, it, it, listen, you got the brains, you got the talents, you don't have the habits. You don't have the habits. Soon as stuff get tough, you quit. Yeah. So, listen, in the United States Army, I was military intelligence. I was an intelligence analyst for the United States Army. And then I, I kind of went, I went to the lead task force of 3rd Brigade in Fort Hood, Texas. So, if you know what that means, I was in 19 Cav, which was the lead task force for 3rd Brigade, which is the most deployable unit inside of all of the Army. So, we learned immediately, I spent three and a half of my four years in the field, we learned immediately that our brain always wants us to quit. It's literally always in survival mode, okay? That, here's what that means. That means, I explained this one time, that means it's my, my elbow right here. There's a such thing as hyperextension. Right. That means that it does not want to go this way. And before my elbow lets you break it, it'll bend. Right, 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 right. Okay, right. that makes sense to you. Okay, watch this here. Now, football, you understand, it's a very violent sport, although I like football. Right, right, right. Amen, amen. Right? But before you hit me and break my knees and hyperextend them, 
My body, my brain, without thinking, will make my thighs move and bend before you break my knees. Right. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? <clears throat> my body doesn't have to think about protecting itself. My brain automatically tells it, quit, fall down, you might get hurt. Amen. And that's how all y'all live. Your brain, as soon as you try something new, it immediately shut down on you when things get hard. You got 40, 50% left in you, but your brain protects you and say, nope, don't do this. It's too difficult. It's too difficult. Stop being, break, move. No, we, we got to live tomorrow. Your brain does not want you to win. It wants you to be comfortable. Did you hear what I just said? Your mind does not want you to win. Winning is hard. Winning takes effort. Winning takes you look runner's second win. You ever heard of it? A runner's second win. The runner literally, his brain says, we cannot go no more. No, seriously, stop running. No, 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 no. Seriously, stop running. No, seriously, you about to kill us. Don't you feel your heart about to explode out your chest? You can't, your lungs are burning. Stop running. And you have to say, no, I'm going to keep going. No, 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 seriously, we can't take it no more. We about to die. Let me make your lower back muscles hurt. Come on, I wish I had some runners out here. Amen. <laughs> listen, listen, no, 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 no. Let me make your, the arch of your, the arch of your feet start hurting. No, 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 no. Stop, stop running. Stop running. You're told. Let me make you think about some other stuff that's stopping you from running. And when you keep overriding that, then the second wind kick in. Your brain literally say, fine, if you're going to keep on going, let me send you some endorphins to release the pain. Somebody missed all that just right there. Amen. Amen. You got to get past that comfort zone inside your head because your brain is going to stop you 40, 50, 60 percent before you can actually go. And if you have the courage to challenge it, your mind will shoot you some drugs inside that are naturally to take away the pain. And if your mind don't do it fast enough, the Lord will jump inside your brain and say, I'll take away the pain. Somebody is missing what I'm saying in this place. But you got the habits of a loser. See, the habits of a loser say, listen, I see freedom over there. I know, I, I, look, I, I watched you get me out of this here, but I'd rather be comfortable. Yeah. Now, you're going to have to choose a struggle. Be comfortable or be successful. Yeah. See, losers will choose comfort over success every time. Now, you can accidentally be successful, and you know what happens to losers when they become successful? They immediately get afraid they're going to lose it. Come on now. Amen. I'm about to get ready in. Okay. Let's see if I can break this or not. <clears throat> you ever got you a good relationship? And it was you who messed it up? Now, you wouldn't admit it then. You ain't admit it then. It was their fault then. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. At that moment, it was their fault. He this and that. He wouldn't. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. But, 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 you know, but two years down the road, you was like, you know what, I sure messed that one up. You know, amen. Amen. You won't say it out loud. Yeah, amen. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you understand what I'm talking about. See, 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 here's how it works. Losers, when they win, they have to go back to losing. And they'll do anything it takes to go back to losing. Ooh, I got this good credit. Girl, go ahead and get that credit card. Wow. <laughs> Don't watch Lil Wayne and Carrie Hilson and everybody else go to the concert. Don't worry. And don't pay it. Come on. Amen. Amen. Get them red bottles. They paying you $30 an hour now. Shine on them. Amen. You understand? That was just, that's just my culture. Amen. Amen. We the only folks that like to shine. Amen. You, you, you'll win. You'll get a good man and you'll treat him like he was the bad one. You'll get a good test score. Then you'll stop studying. You lose 10 pounds and you say, you know what, I can cheat today. Yeah. <laughs> and then cheating today turned into uh, cheat tomorrow. I ain't going to work out. It's too cold out there to work out today. And you're going inside a warm gym, but you don't want to get in a cold car. Come on, now, amen. You understand what I'm saying? The very, listen, you have all you need. In this text, these guys are literally on the way to freedom, but they have the habits of losers. What are the habits of losers? Complaining. 
It's a bunch of them. But if I had to give them to you in one word, complaining. If I had to give it to you in two words, complaining and quitting. Losers complain and losers quit. Now here's the deal. Those people complaining in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, do not make it in the promised land. Their children do. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to let your children make it. But I'm saying those children made it and still messed up because their parents didn't teach them how to win and be winners when they win. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. One of the worst things you can ever do in life is underachieve. The absolute worst thing you can do in life is teach your children how to be just like you and underachieve. Wow. I want to talk about the habits of a loser. Let me give you <clears throat> this one last thing. <clears throat> There's this wonderful guy I love to talk about. He was a homeless man named Jack. <clears throat> and Jack was homeless and he saw this wonderful lady named Peggy <clears throat> and Peggy had manicured hands, fur jacket and Peggy says, sir I want to buy you something to eat. <clears throat> he says well, no, he, he violently by far as Peggy, Peggy and the police officer sees this They're outside the cold streets of New York City and the police officer just happens to know Jack because he's always on this corner and he's a veteran he sees his army jacket and he said, man, what's going on? He said, no, 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 no. This, this man didn't do anything. I'm just trying to feed him. She said, and the officer said, well, listen, man, Jack, this is a good thing for you. Get up. And they both help him up, and they, they walk him to the deli on the corner. And when they get inside the deli on the corner, they, the lady, she gets in the room, and she immediately knows where she wants to go. She says, no, 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 put us back there. And the officer thinks that she, she's ashamed to, to be with the with the homeless man and as they sit down everybody is staring because he doesn't look right, he doesn't smell right he doesn't have any front teeth and he's just not the right person for this restaurant the customers get upset, they start complaining and the owner comes over and says uh, y'all have to leave because he's upsetting our customers and the lady, Peggy says, are you familiar with Cruise Construction Company? He says, well, yes, ma'am, I am. They, they rent out my biggest room every Thursday while I am Peggy Cruz, the owner Come on, of that company. The owner immediately fixes his tune, goes back there. He said, well, ma'am, how can I help you? I said, listen, I need, a roast, I need a roast beef sandwich. I need it so big you can't cut through it. I need it so big the grease uh, goes through the bag. He said, yes, ma'am, come right through. And as the owner goes back to the restaurant, I mean, to the register that makes the sandwich, she looks at the homeless man and she says, Sir, do you remember me? The homeless man looks up at Peggy and says, no, I don't remember you. She said, sir, look again. And as he looks again, he said, well, you kind of look familiar. She said, well, listen, I came in here six years ago. I just graduated college and I had nothing. And they wanted my student loans and I had nothing. And I was very hungry, but I had nothing. And I was waiting on a job interview, but I had nothing. And I asked you, can I just come in here? I need to use the pay phone, but I don't have a quarter. You gave me a quarter. You worked right here in this very same restaurant. And not only did you give me a quarter, but then I was very hungry. I said, do you mind if I wash dishes to eat? And you said, listen, that's illegal. I can't do that. But I tell you what, go sit back there in that corner in the same table in which they're sitting right now. <laughs> and then the man said, and then she said, well, I thought you were going to call the cops on me, but, I, but you brought me a roast beef sandwich. It was so big, I couldn't cut it with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> it was so big that it, the grease went through the bag. And I thought you stole it, but I watched you go inside your pockets. And I watched you put the money inside the register. And you didn't know, but the quarter that you gave me, I used it to call the interview. And I got the interview that day. And I started on this construction company with my construction degree. But then I moved out and I started my own construction company. And I just called to let you know that I've been looking for you for two years now. And you didn't even know, but I already called my COO. And he's already paid for a house for you. He paid for the taxes for two years. But you don't even already know it, but I've made you a wardrobe for the next two years. It's already bought and paid for. But you don't even understand. I've already given you a job in my construction company. So now you have a house, but you got a wardrobe, and you have the money to sustain yourself for the next two years and a six-figure salary. And he immediately looks at her, and he, he cries. He said, listen, 
Just call Eddie. Eddie has everything you need. Just call him. It's already set up. He's just waiting on your sides. He cries. He says, no, no, no. Don't thank me. God had already had it arranged for you. And all I'm trying to do is tell you right now in this place today that it may seem like you were down to your last right now. And it may seem like you have the habits of a loser right now, but God already has your breakthrough arranged for you. God has somebody getting ready to find you as fast as they can that's already have your breakthrough for you already paid out. God is getting, God has already fired the person in your new position, but he's kept them on their job and he's getting ready to move them out when you develop the habits of a winner. And the moment you develop the habits of a winner, God is going to move them out because the Bible says the wealth of the wicked, I wish I had somebody, is laid up for the righteous and God already has your breakthrough waiting for you. So I ask you, I charge you, develop the habits of a winner and watch how everything is already arranged for you. Let me pray for you, Lord, we thank you that there's some winners in this place today. God, is something about developing the habits of a winner in which when we do that, you unlock things that you were holding back from us. God, change our mind. Change our hearts. Change our motives. And please, in the name of your son, change our friends. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive it, will you say amen? Amen.